But this is a private conversation. Yeah, so this is totally this off the record. No, 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 no tweeting this, no blogging this. This is just the two, two guys sitting around talking. Um, the landscape is changing by the minute here. This is not something that, you know, where you could look back and say, all right, well, here's what we've got. We've got artificial intelligence. We talked about IBM Watson Health. You know, we've got ubiquitous connectivity. We've got big data and understanding that in new ways. We've got um, a host of new technologies that every day I'm reading something new that is transforming this landscape. And it's wild. I mean, obviously, we have a lot of them here over the next two days. But, you know, I'm not sure we're ready in many yeah. senses that there's an explosion. But how do we deal with it? Who's in charge morally, ethically, legally? How do we respond as a society? If I tell you, you know, listen, you're carrying the sickle cell gene, but I can fix your sperm so that it won't carry it. Is that appropriate to do or not? I mean, it's never who makes that decision? To tell me you can fix my sperm, but that's that's. I really. You told me that we were supposed to talk All about right, your sperm. Right. Okay. Um, See, that's why I love this conference because on on day one, that's what you start with. Yeah. But I do think it's an amazing time, and we have to start to get ready. So I think with discourse comes understanding. So the more we could talk about these and put it out there, mm. obviously we can actually you know meet the challenge. At the same time. You've got this big entity called government, yeah. which is coming in and inducing change in many ways. And I'm not sure they even know what they're doing all the time. Um, what gives you that impression? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, listen, obviously <laughs> they want a health care bill. I'm not sure they care what's in the health care bill as long as it's a new bill right. compared to the old bill. All right, we'll talk about that in the next session. You've got a whole big session, mm -hmm. so I don't want to steal the thunder for that. But, you know, so much of what's changing now is a mindset. Right? I mean, it's not just the technology that's come in, it's the willingness to break rules. And you get that feeling of that fail fast Silicon Valley. I know it's a cliche, but there's some truth to that cliche. Are you seeing that? We're seeing it every day. I mean, I see it in patients who ask about everything they read, you know, everything you write, every single yeah. patient of mine views it as a beacon of hope. Yeah. So every company out there, you literally are their hope. And I see it in their eyes. You know, at the same time, I see it in our kids. Our kids are learning more about devices than, than I've learned my entire lifetime. They're learning in months. And so things are changing. We're, you know, there's a paradox shift. The doctor's office, we used to be the one in charge. We used to collect the data. We used to draw your blood. We used to do all of that. Yeah. Now it changed, right? Pretty soon you're going to prick your finger at home and send in a biochip. You're checking three months of blood pressure data and bringing that in with you rather than me just checking in at 1 o'clock. You're checking all kinds of other biometrics. And we can actually do something in my office, which is rare, have a real conversation about the data. Well, Instead of me calling you two, three days later with the answer. And I think that's going to be a real change. It's exciting because people, doctors, can actually practice medicine rather than just collecting data and using the telephone to practice. And I think it will be a paradigm shift, and we're going to get much better care. And let me talk about that. the other player in this, the patient. Um, Dr. Eric Topol, who is going to be speaking here, mm -hmm. has written a fantastic book called this, The Patient Will See You Now, talking about the shift between, in the power balance between doctor and, and patient. And so you do need to go to doctors. Doctors have this expertise. They have this training. But patients now feel empowered as never before. No question about it. And in a good way. You know, yeah. there still will always be the art of medicine. Yeah. You know, I love what IBM Watson Health is doing, and it's great, but it will not replace doctors. No offense. Right. They're going to both work complementary together. You know, there's an art to medicine. The great father of American medicine was called William Osler, and he wrote the first textbook of medicine in the 1890s. In fact, he had three daughters, and he used to have a handshake. When he used to go to his daughter's suitors, yeah. he used to go like this. And take their blood pressure? Because back then, <laughs> untreated syphilis, she would get lymph nodes right here. Oh, God. And so it was called the Osler handshake. And he was checking his daughter's suitors for syphilis. I can't tell you. You know, as a father... By the way, you were negative. Yeah, thank you. <sighs> but, I can't tell you, as a father, that is a very important thing to know. Um, so... <laughs> There's a great story where 10 Rembrandt experts in a room, and there are 10 paintings on the wall. Nine are real, and one is a forgery. And they all look, and they go, real, real, fake, real, and they get it right. And when you ask them, why is this real, and why is this a forgery, they can't tell you. The human brain is amazing in what it takes in, the thousands of things, it puts a hierarchy, and you make a decision. We're not going to replicate that. But at the same time, we do have the Watsons of the world to bring in data that we didn't have the opportunity to see, or we didn't have the opportunity to apply to a patient and bring that all in and help us make the right decision. 
together we're going to get great medicine. And in, the other thing that's changing this is this transformative technology, the smartphone. I was going to try to bring it out and be real cool and have that, but I don't know where my phone is. Thank you. My phone. Uh, oh. Look at that. Um, <laughs> his, his phone is so much more interesting than my phone, I can promise you on the messages. But this is the technology that is transforming everything because it's bring, this is a, an optical scanner. It's an ultrasound. It's an MRI. It's able to look at in my retina and see if I have retinopathy. It can look at lesions on my, on my arm and, and broadcast that to to a, you know, a, uh, an oncologist anywhere and say, do you have some sort of skin cancer? I mean, this is amazing having this kind of power. It's remarkable technology, and it yeah. certainly aids us in what we're doing. You're welcome to my phone. Just uh, tell my wife I'll be home late for dinner right. tomorrow. The, you know, the one thing it can't replace, and I think this is the one thing that I spoke yesterday to one of the big laboratory company meetings, all the tech companies together, and when I ask a patient, how do you feel? There's no blood test for that. Mm. There's no technology for that. Still, probably the most important question in health, there's nothing that can aid except the patient saying, I feel sick or I feel good or I feel ah, ah. Um, ah, ah you know, we need to quantify and we right. don't have the ability to do that. So this has democratized many of the things we've talked about, but there's still a long way to go. If I can't measure how you feel, think about that. That's amazing. Well, we keep to a very tight schedule here, and we have two incredible days of conversation. We're going to be talking about all of this. This was a really great framing. Thank you, David. Um, uh, I'm going to... Can I say one thing? Yeah. You're the co-chair. Sure. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm here, and I think all of you are here because we want to make a difference. And, you know, when Cliff first approached me about participating in this, I got very excited because most of you in the audience, I would have never had the opportunity to meet. So the idea to cross disciplines, to have a small company, a large company, someone from government, someone from pharma, someone from the computing industry together, to me, really excited me that we can make an impact together on health. And so I thank you for allowing me to participate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Such a pleasure. Thank you.